Hi everyone, here at the Australian Army Tank Museum in Pakapanyal, Victoria, about 120 kilometres north of Melbourne, and we're taking a look at some of the armour in their World War II collection, in particular some examples of, um, of uh, British armour from World War II. So I was really excited to, um, to come up here and take a look at this tank in particular. So this is a cruiser tank um, uh, from World War II of, uh, of British design. Um, termed the Cromwell for the cruiser Mark 8 and this is um, a very early version of that uh, of that Cromwell tank so it's a Cromwell um, Mark 1. So this vehicle was sent over here to Australia early during the um, development and production of the uh, of the tank to uh, to let the Australian Army trial it and, um, and and see what learnings they could take from uh, from this latest um, design at the time. So being a cruiser tank in British employment it's designed to engage primarily other tanks um, it's designed to have relatively high speed and in some ways to, um, to optimise speed compared to, um, compared to weight and, um, and armour penalties that you might pay in the design of the tank. So as a cruiser designed to um, break through enemy lines, um, get into the uh, rear areas, disrupt communications, engage enemy tanks, that kind of thing, as opposed to primarily being designed to support the, the infantry. So as with most of the um, cruiser tank designs, used by the British in World War II. It has a Christie suspension, which is a great suspension for high-speed travel. So the, uh, the road wheels here are mounted on, uh, on swing arms, which pivot, and uh, inboard behind the, um, behind the hull side plate, there's coil springs that control the motion of those, um, those, uh, those road wheels. Um, again, like with most British tank design, cruiser tank designs of World War II, you've got a rear-mounted engine and a rear drive sprocket. So rear engine, rear drive. The, uh, the great thing about the, uh, the Cromwell compared to early iterations of, um, of British cruiser tanks is it has here stowed inside a, um, a uh, Meteor engine, which is a uh, terrestrial version of the uh, famous Rolls-Royce Merlin engine that was uh, used in the Spitfire, um, in bombers, and, uh, and, uh, in, but in this case here it was utilised for, uh, for a tank. So some versions of this hull did get a, um, a Liberty engine uh, Nuffield in, uh, Liberty, so manufactured in the in the UK, and those versions were called uh, were called Centaurs. But if the tank was called a Cromwell, it had the um, had the Meteor engine inside. So this um, this Cromwell Mark One, the uh, the early version of it, was fitted with a um, QF six pounder um, anti tank gun. So this is a 57 millimeter bore um, gun and had a um, a, a quite effective um, uh, armor piercing round. Um, that could be um, utilised to engage tanks. However, subsequent versions of the Cromwell were updated to use a bored out version of this gun that was bored out to 75 millimetres, the so-called QF 75 millimetre gun. Now that gun was able to commonise its um, ammunition with Shermans. And um, given that most um, British divisions in Northwest Europe utilised a combination of Shermans and Cromwells, it meant that while there was two different types of tanks, at least with the 75 millimetre gun, the ammunition supply problems could be um, could be simplified. So, this is um, this is one of the uh, early examples, of which there was only about 350 produced, which had the um, had the six pounder, and a lot of um, subsequent ones um, for the main production used that 75 QF 75 millimeter bought out version of this gun that uh, commonised ammunition with the um, with the Sherman. So this tank was used um, in uh, in northwest Europe um, and was used. Um, during the Normandy, uh, during the Normandy landings, and um, and, and, and in the breakout there, um, you can, uh, um, I guess, in Normandy, it was um, it was famously engaged um, uh, during the Battle of um, Villers Bocage, um, about a week after the uh, Normandy landings, where it encountered um, heavy Tiger ones of the um, 101st um, German. Uh, uh, German tank unit, and um, a large number of them were knocked out in um, in a very short period of time. So they didn't do too well when faced with heavy tanks. But as a cruiser, it wasn't designed to withstand um, blows from um, from 88 millimeter guns, um, as were mounted on those um, those Tiger ones of the um, 101st SS heavy uh, heavy Panzer Battalion. Um, so what else can we say about the um, about the Cromwell here? So. Um, coaxial to the uh, to the main gun in the turret was mounted a uh, 7.92 uh, um, Beza machine gun, um, and in this blanked off area here, there was also place for a um, for a bow mounted Beza as well. So in this in this one that was supplied to Australia, that um, that bow mounted Beza isn't there, but you can see the um, the slot there for the um, for the uh, coaxial turret mounted. 
there's the uh, the driver's hatch at the um, at the front. Um, and just trying to think of um, of anything else that might be useful to uh, to understand. Some some Cromwells were also fitted with 95 millimeter howitzers. Um, so there was, if you like, three different types of guns that were um, that were uh, fitted to that uh, for that turret. But unfortunately, the um, the turret was not designed, and the turret ring on the tank was not capable of accepting larger guns such as the um, QF-17 Pounder, which was saw service in the uh, Sherman Firefly tanks. So while this tank um, uh, was built and, and uh, incorporated a lot of the learnings from previous cruiser designs that the British made, they unfortunately made the mistake of, um, while, they, while they sized it to, to be able to handle the, um, the six pounder, it couldn't handle the 17 uh, pounder, which um, would have been uh, a useful uh, capability to, uh, to have in the tank, especially later in the war. So this was the last cruiser that was um, designed and employed um, during World War II. Um, the, uh, the next tank in the line, which um, was delivered to Europe just before the end of the war but never saw service, was the Centurion. So you can think of this as one of the, one of the stepping stones to get to that famous um, post-war British tank, the Centurion, which um, was used here in Australia by the Australian Army, used um, famously by the Israelis um, during their engagements in the, um, in the Middle East. And, um, and utilized um, all over the world. So um, while this tank had its shortcomings at, at the time, um, it, um, it, it was effective, it served its, um, it served its purpose. Um, it had high speed and high mobility, so it was great in the scouting and reconnaissance role. Um, and that's fantastic that we've got an example um, here in Australia of those very early marks with that, um, with that six QF six pounder gun um, that's, uh, that's in the collection. So. Um, uh, we'll take a look at some more tanks here at the Australian Army uh, Tank Museum and I uh, hope you enjoyed this one.